Welcome back to the show. The finder this morning says court rescinds a focus bill. He is expected to face uh, Jiros uh, tomorrow. That's on the uh, the finder. Uh, 77,962 national service persons have been uh, posted. That's according to the scheme. The Daily Graphic worked to avoid another bailout. The IMF is talking to government. The Daily Guide says new twist in Canadian girls a kidnap. These are some of the papers I have with me this morning. Now, doing the talking, a uh, lecturer from the University of Education, Winneba, Dr. Ahmed Chenapo is here. Good morning, and I hope you're doing great. And a uh, member of parliament uh, for, uh, sitting member of parliament, and also aspiring member of parliament for Tamale North, Al Haji Suhini is here. Good morning, too. Hope you're good. Good morning, uh, <laughs> boss man. I'm terrific. Thank you. Okay, hope thank you're well you. Too. I'm, I'm good. Thanks for your time with us. And the member of the NPP, Sir Richard Ahiyakba, is also here. Good morning, too. Hope you're doing great. Very well. Grateful for your time with us. Uh, let's start with this uh, uh, issue from the Ghana Integrity Initiative. If we take a look at some of the news this morning, um, the story of Mr. Uh, Kwame Wusu is making uh, some news. Uh, we'll take a bite of that and then we'll move on to some other issues. Now, if you go to 3 News, Dot com. you find the story on our uh, site where the Ghana Integrity Initiative is asking uh, that the president revokes the appointment. I'm trying to grab a copy of uh, what uh, the GII released and then let you into one or two of the paragraphs. Now, um, if you go there, it says that it's asking the president to immediately revoke the appointment of Mr. Kwame Wusu to, uh, to be the board chair of Ghana Revenue Authority. Uh, it is basing this on what it calls uh, intense public outcry in the uh, pending investigations into allegations of abuse of office and conflict of interest involving Mr. Wusu. Now, the appointment of uh, the former managing director of the Ghana Maritime Authority, Mr. Kwame Wusu, as the chairman of the board of directors of the Ghana Revenue Authority, has evoked disappointment among the general public, particularly because of the events preceding his exit from, his exit from the previous uh, job. The raging debate is focused on the integrity of Mr. Wusu and he, and its implication to the public perception of the new institution he has been appointed to. It is important to remind the president of these sections of his oath of office, and that, that's the quote, I declare myself uh, to the service and well-being of the people of Ghana and to do right to all manner of persons. The said service which the president swore to all Ghanaians include holding himself and appointees accountable to the people of Ghana and making information and in his accountability available to the people whose mandate he hold to uh, govern. Uh, the statement goes on to say that failure by the president to revoke Mr. Kwame Wusu's appointment or publish the report that clears him will only contribute to negating all the efforts of GRE to promote voluntary compliance of the country's tax laws and hence leaving the country to mark time at tax to GDP ratio of 12.6%. Uh, they quoted this uh, figure from the Minister of uh, finance 2018 fiscal data January to December. That's a story. Uh, uh, Richard, let me certainly start this conversation with you. Now, this is what GAI is, is asking of our president. What should the president do? Right. Uh, good morning to you and uh, to my senior brothers here. Uh, I know my brother here is very busy at this time, so it's good to have him in Accra. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, very good morning to the president. Uh, I think he's uh, still out on uh, some uh, break. I uh, wish him a good rest. And the vice president was holding the fort. I uh, wish him all the, the strength to carry on uh, in the absence of the president. And a uh, very good morning to your viewers this morning, uh, Bright. Uh, the former uh, Maritime Authority boss, uh, Mr. Kwame Usu, appointed uh, as the chair of DRA. Uh, I'm trying to think and, and probably read the president's rationale in wanting to do that. 
uh, you have said, uh, and the story we're going to probably look at, I suppose, may maybe later on to mm. do with uh, Ghana um, post IMF. Right. Um, is one of the key things we need to look at is revenue mobilization. And so when you uh, recently heard the Minister of Finance talking about how uh, our domestic revenue mobilization is not doing well, and we know that is sitting around 13% or 12.6%, uh, we need to do more. Uh, so if you are a president, then you are looking at individuals or personalities who can help uh, change the culture be able to help invigorate that process, bring fresh ideas that will lead to be able to uh, move that percentage uh, further up. And where we sit, uh, our debt servicing is increasing, a whole lot of things are happening. So on that revenue front, you are looking for individuals who can come in and shore up uh, the collection and ensure that what target we set for ourselves uh, at the beginning of the fiscal year, um, we need to be able to work hard to achieve those. So I'm trying to see that if if you were the president of a country where you need to build, you need to be able to increase your collection, uh, revenue collection, and knowing how much work is out there to be done, you're looking for individuals who have the capacity to do that. Mm -hmm. And that for me is the thinking that I suppose went into the recommendation or the uh, appointment. I understand he hasn't accepted. I think he has about 14 day window uh, to, to accept, accept the, the appointment. So I'm thinking here, uh, what would make the president do that is to, first of all, uh, be in a position to increase the revenue collection, which has been a problem for us all along. Mm -hmm. And now I am I'm fully aware of the issues that uh, had to do with the, the former GMA boss. Uh, I, I doubt, and the stories that I was reading is saying to renovate his two-bedroom house. It's not to renovate his two-bedroom house. I don't want us to really to get that issue. Right. But those who really want to know can find out. I have been to that house. Uh, it was a complete rebuild, not a re renovation. The contract and what was given uh, initially, which became a public uh, discussion when the issue came up, was to renovate uh, uh, his apartment. Mm. But it wasn't. It was a complete rebuild. If you go there, it's not a two-bedroom. It's more than two bedrooms. It's about four so with, a new with a, yes, a, a total new facility that was built. Now, I I am at a... million Ghana cities, by the way. Yes, you need to go and see it. You, you, uh, you no, are, yeah. Mm. No, I, we know that, yes. And it's a whole new building. And Bright, actually, maybe we can bring our cameras there. It's, it's, it's not a two-bedroom. So when we characterize that way, it, it takes the discussion away from what is being done to focus on and just an individual wanting to put 13. Why would you do that? But the room definitely is bigger than that. Uh, now, so I am conflicted, uh, Bright, to say, I have a challenge of wanting to raise revenue, and I have a number of people who can do it, but I have one individual who can help me do it. Right. Am I going to take that individual to achieve that objective, mm -hmm. or shy away from a perceived corrupt issue, or brought a case that, or allegation, uh, let me rephrase that, allegation that he's built a house, which is not for his personal use, mm. but for the authority, which is going to pre, uh, you know, transcend his time in office, is going to leave another GMA boss who comes, will stay in that, becomes a property of the authority. On account of that, should I not get that person to do the work or shy away because of that allegation? If you ask me, my decision will be, if that individual can do the job, then that's who I want. So I am seeing and I hear Transparency International, uh, sorry, a Ghana Integrity Initiative right. uh, case uh, on this as uh, doing their work. But then we must be, uh, we must be faithful to the facts, as it were. Transfer, uh, Ghana Integrity Initiative can, and I don't know if they have gone to see that house and to see an individual who can do a piece of work for us 
uh, not to be able to do it because there's some perceptual issues to do with a renovation uh, or re rebuild of a, a house, which is not for himself or directing that money for his own use, but to build an asset which over time will accumulate that value for us, and even in excess of how much was invested in it. I find that to be problematic and find that to be shifting away from what is substantial to engage issues that I think will not inure to our benefit. If I were uh, Transparency International, mm -hmm. we would have investigated if there's any issue specific to corruption, mm -hmm. then we'll bring that to the fore. But to just cut across and say that individual was here and that was an issue come without fully uh, you know, apprising themselves with the facts of the matter and then say on that account don't have that man do the vital work of national revenue mobilization which we need. Let me, before I go to Dr. Analaji, the GIS issue is that there is investigations ongoing. Mm. Either you publish the report that will say that Mr. Kwame Wusu has done nothing wrong or don't appoint him to GRE until that report is out. Is that not legitimate? That's a concern. Uh, whether or not it's legitimate, I don't know. But, Bright, let's not stampede the process. He's not being appointed to go back to GMA. Okay? He's going to a different place where his presence there will have no bearing on what investigation is happening. You understand? But with the work that must be done today is critical. We are in a situation where we need to mobilize resources. Since tw uh, 2015, we've been classified as debt, debt distress. And we've been working our way out of that hole. And we need revenue and we need it fast. We need people who must come in, help mobilize those resources for us. And I think that this uh, creation of uh, perception about corruption in a, in a case to do with a man, I don't think is fair. Okay. What happened there, people know exactly what happened. Call it discuss it but don't use that as a basis to say so what are they investigating right if i hold your hand and show you the house and because of the discussion that came out i went there okay. you understand if i hold your hand and you go see the house just by standing outside you can understand that this is an investment not for mr kwame Wusu, but for the authority and this is going to be an asset for the authority that will predate uh, will transcend his leadership and, fact, and others will come and, and others will come and use. okay so the value in terms of asset and even after a while if they want to turn it over whatever they decide to do with it is immeasurable so let's not use that as a basis to disadvantage us Ghanaians. not this thing is not even about the president it's about us Ghanaians mm. because the revenue we need is for all for our good for all is Ghanians. to advance this country is to be able to undertake the development project that all of us are craving for and i think that's the right thing now okay. whether or not he will accept i don't know you, you but i'm speaking help. and are trying to understand what motivates a leader to do the right thing in difficult times you make decisions that in your to the long-term benefits of your people grateful uh, Alaji, i'm quoting i'm reading from the the gie uh, gii demands it says that if the president however if the president wants to go ahead or stand by his decision then GII is calling on him to publish the report of investigations that uh, contradict the allegation of conflict of interest and financial misappropriation that is made against uh, his appointee is the GII asking for more than what the president could do well right thank you very much you and I have already exchanged pleasantries so mm -hmm. let me say good morning to Richard and uh, Doc and good morning to our viewers, especially the very good people of the Tamale North uh, constituency. Um, right, before I answer your question, I every day wonder how we got ourselves, you know, to the point that we can't even seem to, you know, understand the governance that we are being provided. Because the more you try to understand, the more you are hit with so much dishonesty. And right, I like to start on the note that my brother started. He greeted the president and asked that he enjoy his rest. I wish him well too. I pray that he enjoys his rest. Only that I wish he was doing that in, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, Molly. 
<laughs> and I'm saying that, Bright, because yeah. only this year during SIF March, <laughs> when the president addressed the nation, he urged us to consider visiting Ghanaian tourist sites during our next holidays. And then he packs bag and baggage and goes to UK for a holiday. Who is, why, why this deception? Why this dishonest? They were just this year, safe match. I'm sure you followed the speech, dog. He said that Ghanaians, during our next holy day, we should consider mm. visiting the beautiful sites of this country. And then he has the pleasure to go on a holiday. Now here he's in UK, right? <laughs> I mean, everything is just turned upside down. You hear certain things and the actions are so inconsistent. And you wonder if this is just drama for some people or really lives and the need to transform lives and the nation is at stake. And that brings me to the issue of corruption, which is a key feature in the story that we are discussing. The fact that GII have had to issue this statement, asking the president to revoke this appointment, right? And remember, this is about the second time civil society organizations have had cause to complain about the president's approach in the way he deals with cases of corruption that come up in his administration. You remember the Bost saga, where the coalition of you know, civil society organizations in the fight against corruption had cause to issue a statement again to express worry about how the president and his government had dealt with the issues of corruption that had arisen at Bost. And you see, these things are based on the assurances that the president gave when he was candidate. It is not just out of vacuum. It is because we had a government in place that had a certain attitude towards corruption which he thought was inadequate and he had a better way of dealing with it. So based on that confidence, Ghanaians voted him. So when you have a situation where in the past corrupt cases or allegations of corruption were investigated, people who were found culpable were prosecuted, whether they were part of the administration or not. In some cases, monies were retrieved. And in some cases, people were dismissed. And you considered that, that as not being enough. And you assured you were going to do more. And you come and what we get is that at the least opportunity, you clear people who are clearly you know, seem to have engaged in questionable transactions. And you do worse than you criticized. And I've always said that one thing you cannot fault the previous government when it comes to the fight against corruption was effort. You can say it was less. You can say it could have been more. For example, in the retrieval of monies, you could have said that, you can say, you can argue that more money could have been retrieved, but at least there was the effort. In the prosecutions, you can say more people could have been prosecuted, but at least there were prosecutions. You can say more people could have been dismissed, but at least there were dismissals. But what you don't see now is that same effort. You don't even see the move to prosecute to dismiss. And you remember that even in some cases, when the, the, the government, after investigations, did not find compelling evidence mm. to dismiss people and, you know, reappointed them or at least demoted them. Because at least if one was a cabinet minister and becomes a presidential staffer, that's obviously a demotion. If they were demoted, my brothers in the MPP ridiculed it and said, Corruption was rewarded and people were recycled and rewarded in a way. And then you have this on your hands. And you have really the audacity to defend it. That the man is engulfed, I mean, is, is involved in, you know, all the issues we know happened around, you know, his leadership at the Maritime Authority. Mm. Investigations are ongoing. And the president really has the courage, 
despite all that we read in the media, to without convincing us that those things that we read in the media had no basis, appoint such a man to be in charge of revenue mobilization in this country. Really, that man really has some guts. It is a man that can do the work. No. Well, you see... Will his appointment stop the investigation or affect, impact the investigations in any way? You see, in the fight against corruption, it is not just about <coughs> only reality. It's also about the perception of it. That is why co corruption is me measured using perception. So it is not just... You should not just be seen fighting corruption. There must also be that perception that you are indeed fighting corruption. And this appointment does not show a man who is, you know, uh, 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 really worried about the perceptions people have about his government in terms of how he is dealing with issues of corruption. And that is why, right, I think that, I think that the president should begin to listen to the loud voices of concern. Instead of always rubbishing it and thinking it is opposition and MPP, NDC that is talking. Manasseh Azure was one of the critics, biggest critics of the former president and his administration. But at least, he has stated categorically that on the fight against corruption, using Jida as example, he believes that today, Madame Rebecca, the wife of the president, will choose the former president over him. That is not NDC speaking. The civil society organizations that express concern about how he handled Bost, and now the GIA, GIA is concerned, and many other such revelations in many other institutions is it the Ghana Cylinder Manufacturing Company? Is it with uh, Ghana Export Promotion? Mm. Even the presidency, the Ministry of Finance, people are simply disappointed in, 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 the, in the approach that, you know, uh, 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 when it comes to the fight against corruption, people are simply disappointed because this was the man we're told was a no-nonsense person. He's not going to, you know, uh, uh, countenance anything. But clearly, what we had was better. If for nothing at all, we had a president who, for the mere fact that his appointee was heard on phone, talking about how she plans to make a million Ghana cities, was fired. Just like that, no long talk, no investigation, no committee fired for just even thinking about it, not even revealing how she was going to make the one million Ghana cities, whether she was going to do it dubiously or not. It didn't matter, she was fired. His that own colleague in parliament, his friend, when it came up that he was involved in Jida, whatever, whatever, even to the annoyance of his party. He said the law must take its course. The infamous Wyoming, well, they made noise about. Today, I mean, everything, every process that was started by the previous government is exactly what this government continued with. Nothing different. Nothing. So for me, sometimes, I believe if the previous government didn't even initiate it, these guys would have had no clue okay. as to what to do. So, Bright, I think that for me, this is just another example of the cluelessness and the dishonesty with which the NPP is governing this country. Dr. Jinopo, so perception is key so that even if the man is sent there, the, the perception that he's, he's been involved in something doesn't help in the fight against corruption. Is that it? Well, uh, uh Right. I think uh, this, this issue is uh, an interesting issue. Interesting in the sense that we are talking of uh, the appointment of somebody that uh, if I, I take a cue from my brother Richard, mm. uh, somebody who has the competence to more or less help the president to achieve an important objective, which is uh, revenue mobilization. 
But if you look at the debate, the debate is not centered on his competence, but it's centered on his track record at, GR, at uh, Ghana Maritime Authority. And that is where I think, uh, if you look at what he did, whether he was right or wrong, mm. uh, he resigned. He resigned. He wasn't booted out. He resigned. And after his resignation, there was an investigation that was being conducted. That investigation, one way or the other, was supposed to either it was wrong or right. But today, he's taking a new appointment. You get a, you get a point. Bright is accused of doing something at TV3. He resigns to pave way for investigation. Mm. The next day, Bright is working at GTV. It means that you are culpable. It means you are wrong. <laughs> What it means is that it's a validation of the accusation that was being leveled against him. So you can't and be made to work there You can't there again. be made to work there again. And that is why I find it interesting. Who could have advised the president to appoint him to that position? The man could have the competence, whatever. But I think it's a wrong political decision to make. It's a wrong political decision to make. No matter how you look at it. If even the guy hadn't done anything wrong, let's say he hadn't done anything wrong, the, the best place to have had cleared him, the best place to have sent him was back to his post. But today, the investigations is not out. And that is why GIA is calling for what? The report. Because they believe that the report is going to indict him. They believe the report is going to indict him. But I think in all of this, look, uh, the politicians will do their politics and stuff like that. But uh, for us as Ghanaians, I mean, we are interested in competence, and not only competence, but we are also interested in the integrity of the individual. I don't think uh, Mr. Owusu would be able to survive the position that has been put, especially if you look at the barrage of uh, calls that are coming. I mean, I listened to my very good friend Jampo, who more or less was in one way or the other poo-poo in the government or the, the NPP uh, party that where are the men because if there's this kind of recycling I mean I'm, I'm not doubting the competence mm. of Mr. Osu but if you look at the narrative what has happened relative to his I mean uh, his tenure at uh, I mean the maritime Ghana, the Maritime Authority uh, renovating two bedroom house Converting it to four bedroom at the cost of one million. I'm not saying that he did anything wrong, but well, for we, him we to, can leave that out. Since it's yes, but for him to have resigned, investigation is being conducted. Then he's appointed into a different office. Then it tells you that something really did not go right. So I I think that the president will have to reconsider his decision. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. Look, he wants the good of this country. He sees something good in this man, but I think it's a wrong political decision. He, they, I doubt if the gentleman will be able to survive. Because, uh, look, my, my good friend, uh, uh, Richard, he tries to make the point that, look, the president is looking at how to mobilize revenue. Mm. The gentleman probably has the competence. But we are not able to clear uh, the question of his, uh, I mean, his character in terms of whether he's corrupt or not. And I think that that is foundational when it comes to this whole discourse. So I think that the president will have to take a second look at this appointment. Mm. Uh, if it's necessary, uh, he has to call him back. And I think he has taken the appointment because the appointment happened somewhere in June. Mm -hmm. And we are in July. And he was given 14 days. 14 days. We've 14 gone days. Past so him. we've gone past, at least today is 16th. So mm -hmm. we've gone past the 14 days. So I'm tempted to believe that he has taken the appointment. But I doubt if he'll be able to survive it. Okay. Eric, you, I, I, I a, oh, you, a quick one. Okay. A quick point. I mean, the, 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 the two of them argue against this competence yeah. uh, 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 assertion that you made. Yeah. That the president is looking for competence, so you should pick this one. Well, I, I, I agree uh, with my uh, doctor's uh, initial assessment. Uh, he was going all right and then kind of uh, tipped over the cliff. Uh, but then all said, I think uh, he has basis for his analysis. Mm. He talked about political decision. He says a wrong one. Yes. Uh, but I'm also looking at economic decision. I don't know on what basis he made his it's analysis. Yes. Mm. Wait, hold on. Hold on. So you talk about political decision to appoint him, mm. but I'm looking also at economic decision. Okay. And his analysis, I'm not sure if he based it on any of this, if he based it on economic analysis for which you have to appoint the man 
to help you mobilize resource. So therefore, he negates his argument by saying the man can do the job, but, but politically, it, it is a wrong decision. We are not the especially in the fight against corruption. Exactly. That, that's the argument. The I'm president, to, but I get to do some yes, clarification. The, the president is preoccupied mm -hmm. with the economic situation of the country. That's the basis you go to when you want to make a decision to get revenue mobilization right. So at that point, you are not looking at politics. You are looking at who can do the job. In this country, and even in this It station, doesn't matter who? I'm not saying it doesn't matter who. I'm saying that you are looking at who can do the job. Because you have a job to do, a piece of work to do. In fact, the NDC, my brother was saying competence and clueless, no, huh? I said it's okay, clueless. Cool. I mean, that transcends into the same thing. Okay, dishonesty. Okay, okay. you said so much you can't follow. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> but, but the point I am trying to make is this that if truly mm -hmm. they are focused on solving the problem that afflicts this country, which is revenue, in their time, revenue suffered greatly. When we came, domestic revenue mobilization has gone up by some 11%. Men are doing the job they want to do for this country. You need to get the right people in place. And I'm saying I will trust the individual, mm. the president, that has led us to increase domestic revenue mobilization. I will trust him mm. over one that didn't. Okay. So that if that same person who gave us the room to increase revenue mobilization is appointing somebody to achieve even more for us, then I trust that person. Now, the issue to do with where uh, the, the, the challenges with uh, GMA out. and all of that, that issue, there is nothing in there that I have seen. They can do the investigation in terms of building that house that is corrupt. Okay. So let's okay. not Wrap be, up for let's, me. Let's I, not, I come to Doc. Let's, not, let's not play political football with this. Mm. Let's not look at this as issues that, okay, it is here, so let me say this to discredit the man. We are in a very critical situation. We need to keep this country moving after people have got it stuck in mud. Okay, my brother and his government talking about uh, former president and all. I don't want to drift into that because, because we the don't issue, have a lot yes, of time. Yes, yes. Even if we have time, I won't drift because the okay. issue we have here is a critical one about the future of our country, about all the needs that we have out there, and about the resources we need to be able to satisfy those needs. I want the president, and I will support any day, to get the right people in place. Let's not delve into this perceptual thing the NDC is trying to create okay. to okay. say the man is corrupt when it is not. Let's get the right people to do it. I would be happy if he accepts it. Okay. Let me just yeah, conclude. Yes. Oh, you yeah, let, let conclude. Let me, the NDC has not said he is. Uh, oh, no, it's 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 in fact, they can't release. say because they are not those who are doing the investigations. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> when when he spoke right now, mm -hmm. what he said is what I'm reacting to. Okay. I'm not reacting. He is the one the NDC rep here. So what he says is NDC position. Okay. You understand? I only amplified the GII position. Oh no, he didn't speak to that letter. I amplified the GII. What I am trying to say is so that the NDC, it. and that's why he doesn't want me to say this, okay. the NDC is engaged in a crusade mm, to try to paint this government as corrupt. So this perceptual mud they are throwing every time is calculated, is orchestrated, is designed for effect, and it's not going to work. Okay. We are focused to ensure I'm grateful. that we have individuals who can help us solve the revenue problem we face in this country. I'm grateful. Uh, Dr. Jinapo, clarify very, very this. Quick, the argument about yeah. political and economic uh, reasons why perhaps we need this money in there. I, I think uh, the, the logic that I was trying to establish is very simple. Even if you look at it from the economic point of view, this is a gentleman who happened to be in an office. There was accusations of corruption leveled against him. He, he did the gentleman's job by resigning for him to pave way for investigations to, what, to be conducted. The investigations as it stands now uh, is inconclusive because we don't have the report. And he's been appointed into a different office. What it tells you is that he's not coming back to his office. So at the end of the day, the perception of corruption is being validated by this act. And if it is being validated the by people this, people haven't seen what the, not even the, the report, investigations would say. Even if they, he, they should have waited for the report to be brought out, and if he's, the cleared, is clean. if he's cleared, then he can be taken back to his office or to a different office. And if we are talking about competence, if this tag, this tag about corruption hangs over you as an individual, how are you going to be able to perform uh, 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 in terms of uh, what you are being asked to do? 
And by the way, that's why I said it's a wrong political decision because the president could have avoided this kind of uh, whether what the NDC or the GIA, they could have you could have avoided this by appointing somebody else. Somebody else, Rachel, you could have been appointed into that office. What is wrong? What is wrong? What is wrong? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. I agree. We want but, revenue. But, but, but uh, listen, even if the guy has the competence, let's even play the devil's advocate. What of if the report indicts him that he's a corrupt man? Well, then we cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> I see. Right. Like, right. You cannot. You but cannot. You have, right. If you have wrap up, then let me get you to wrap up. I want us to talk about the IMF issue. Right. First, I'll let you wrap up quickly, briefly for all, me. First of all, it is not correct that revenue mobilization has increased by eleven percent simply because some super, you know, people are doing it. Because over the period, revenue mobilization has always increased since. Okay. Since since. But we we'll call it eleven percent. It has always. It, so it has even been more than eleven percent in some cases. It has always increased. What they have not done is always, you know, they, some people say the targets are usually set low to beat it. But they have always increased revenue mobilization in this country. In fact, it was the basis why you recall that during Dr. Baumier's lectures in opposition, he used to say that the NDC was getting more revenue and should, should be able to do more. It has always increased. So it's not because some Superman is president today. That is the lie that I speak about. Then again, when you talk about even the current revenue mobilization, you cannot discuss the increment without factoring in the expansion works that led to, I mean, the works that led to the, that led to the expansion at the ports. Who did that? Who did that? You cannot discuss increase, increment in revenue mobilization without talking about the ports expansion. Who caused that to happen? So please, let's, let's get things right. And let's be honest and understand that the people we speak to are intelligent and discerning people. Right. Is it the NDC that accused, uh, 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 what's his name? No, the story we're reading no. is not from the NDC. Uh, it's the GIA that is no, raising I'm, I'm, Even in the first place when he was at Maritime Authority, was it the NDC that accused him of anything? So why do you say that the NDC is throwing mad at you? When he said the NDC? NDC is trying to paint this government corrupt. So I am, and you, he used this example. I'm asking you, Bright. W wasn't it your reporter who was even insulted for doing the stories that he did? Kamala Kluche broke Kamala the story. Yeah. Was it the NDC? So why do you sit here and make it look like NDC is trying to... That's why I said, look, the president perhaps is getting that kind of advice, the, the kind of advice that my brother is espousing here is what is given to the president. So when he's criticized, he says it's NDC people. <laughs> so he that is exactly he what he it. is saying. He that is what exactly my brother is here is saying, that no, Osu yeah. was accused by the NDC. When we all know from the, the records that the NDC didn't even issue a statement on this matter. All we all know is that we saw it in the news being reported by the media and 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 we were told and we were told and we were told and we're told that they are doing investigations up to today we don't know the outcome of that investigation in fact apart from even the the construction of the house there was another part of lunch was it lunch mm. some workshop that some workshop that happened at his personal <laughs> hotel and the amounts that were quoted for one person's lunch my brother Ghanaians raised eyebrows all those haven't been clear. Okay, wrap up for now, me. Let's touch by, on the IMF. By, 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 by way of wrap up, I'm asking myself again. The GII that is concerned about this appointment is not NDC. So why are you tagging the NDC? Now, finally, finally, is he the only capable person in the NDC? I mean, the MPP. Didn't they tell us they had the man? If, if, the, if the argument is for competence... So he's the only capable person to help raise revenue in Ghana that the NPP can boast of. Really? If this is their best, then I, we are indeed doomed. I'm grateful. He's a sitting member of parliament for Tamale North. Right. And he's aspiring to contest 2020. <laughs> uh, Richard, <laughs> le, le, I have moved on. No, no. Just, just I have moved on. Well, if he comes, we'll come back. Oh. Five, no, no. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, Rich, no. Rich, okay. We Richard, you are in government, so I'm giving you five seconds. Thank you. You are in government, so I'm giving you five seconds. Oh, okay. Five seconds. Government. When, where do you need to come to the government? <laughs> I'll give another five seconds. <laughs> Richard. You know, right. On a more serious note, uh, the, the, the situation my brother is trying to create here, it doesn't help us. If I were appointed, like my doctor suggested, mm. to that position, there will be a plethora of discussions to be had about this. 
we have the men, but we cannot appoint all the men to be chairman <laughs> okay, of the board. The president has that prerogative. Okay. He's looked at many resumes and many other individuals and their qualification, the ability to do it. Many number of people can do that, but the president has that singular responsibility of selecting one out of many, and he has done that. If the, uh, Mr. Wusu accepts that, then he has the full support of the president and all of us to do the job that is critical. Okay. 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 That's the point. Rex, let's I'm not grateful. deviate and do okay, this I'm kind grateful. of NDC uh, politics. We, but we cannot tell if he, he's gone past the 14 days. So yes, sure, but, he might I, but have it's not for, you know, official that okay. he's accepted or not. Now, no, Daily Graphic this morning says that the IMF is asking, uh, is advising government to pay critical attention to issues that can send the country back to a bailout. It mentions the risk of debt distress, weak domestic revenue, uh, mobilization of budget transactions, and a high level of fiscal risk from the energy sector as issues that could erode the gains made so far. Honorable uh, Suhini, a high debt risk. Uh, weak domestic revenue. Now, we're told of off-budget transactions and a high level of fiscal risk from the energy sector. These are uh, issues that are uh, choking government. The IMF says we need to be careful about it. Well, Brian, what is in this story that as minority in parliament we have not raised? Just point one. Is it the energy debt risk that we face or the high expenditure that is going into consumption without really any uh, uh, assurance of how we are going to uh, uh, get proceeds from the expenditure that we make so that we are assured of our ability to pay you name it almost everything in this story have been addressed by the minority through our press conferences. And if you have followed debates again on the floor of parliament, we have cautioned government severally when it comes to the trajectory that we think they have been going. For example, if you look at the energy sector, we've spoken about how a structure was in place to get the country out of the woods and to make it energy self-sufficient. And because of the early fruits that the president even inherited, he has had cause to brag about how Ghana is now exporting electricity. Because of the work that was put in place by the previous administration, the fact that even in an election year, a visionary leader like President Mahama under the NDC did not shy away from introducing a tax that was considered to be of a nuisance value, especially as far as election was concerned, because he knew the importance of that tax to ensuring that this country became energy self-sufficient. I'm talking about the ESLA. And the opposition being very partisan and cleverly so, took advantage of that. Demonstrated across this country and gave the assurance that they were going to repeal the ESLA when they come into office. What was the use of that ESLA? We, over the period, have had certain things with our energy sector that led to accumulation of debts. Not just under the NDC, but even from Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, especially maybe, let me say, at the, from the point that we started introducing subsidies, we started accumulating these legacy debts. And those debts became a problem for the energy, you know, uh, institution, energy sector institutions to even access funds to carry on with their operations. It also became, you know, uh, uh, it, it inhibited investment in the energy sector because people were afraid. They did not have the assurance that if they invested in that sector, they will be able to recoup their investments. So first of all, when we're hit with the energy crisis and the president promised to fix the doomso, it was not just the doomso. He had to increase production capacity, which is on record to have increased you know, within the shortest possible time, and it's because of that work that we don't have Dumso 
today, at least the erratic ones that we have now could have been worse. And if the people in government deny that, they should shut off Ameri and car power. It was because of that work, to increase capacity. But it was not just capacity. It was also to make sure that we were fuel sufficient. And that is how come Ghana Gas came on board. Investment, prudent investment. And then we signed the ENI gas deal to also make sure that we had fuel in abundance. Because you recall that in those days when the gas pipeline had problems or we didn't pay Nigeria, then we had problems. We could have generation capacity all right, but we wouldn't have fuel because Nigeria wouldn't give us gas. Or on the high seas, fuel will be there and the BDCs will say they won't bring it until you pay them whatever. So we were always held ransom. But due to prudent and visionary thinking, Ghana Gas, ENI, and other, you know, uh, 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 structures were put in place to ensure that we freed ourselves of, you know, the BDCs and, 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 and you know, Nigeria and other West Africa gas pipeline and all that. But what was also important was the energy sector levy fund. And that's why I say even in an election year, the president had that guts because of love for Ghana to set it up so that we could begin to offset the legacy debt and free that sector to grow. What did this government do? After promising to repeal, I mean, to, to remove it when they come into power. They came into power. First of all, where it, it is now obvious that it was a dishonest promise because they have not repealed it. it uh, they have not, you know, uh, removed that tax. It is still, the energy sector levy is still in force. But it is unfortunately not being used for its intended purpose. I can be fact, quick about it for me. I'm running yes, out of In fact, we have, we have had records that show that uh, the, 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 the funds that have accrued from, uh, from the levy, in some cases, have even been used to pay pensions at some point. So you have the energy institutions, especially the uh, uh, IPPs and others, complaining about non-payment. And you have the debts stockpiling. And production is affected. So we have been raising these concerns. We have talked about the government expenditure not meeting the revenue uh, 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 that is being uh, mobilized. We've talked about where the expenditure is even going and how productive you know, those things are in the long term. Okay. So I, I think that the IMF is just simply you know, uh, drawing attention mm -hmm. to what we have been saying as a minority as far as the oh, uh, okay. a, a management of the economy is concerned. And so, you see, uh, mm -hmm. propaganda and niceties and hype and PR, like we have been greeted with that these are the best managers and blah, 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 will all be exposed by the reality. I'm grateful. Dr. Jinapo, I mean, these are issues that government is uh, dealing with, but perhaps struggling debt energy and then raising revenue a, 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 a time a timely caution from the imf well uh, uh, uh right so i wouldn't want to speak too much to this issue i know richard has to respond to most <laughs> of the things that uh, my brother suwini just spoke to i think um, we all happen to be here in 2016 and when i listen to my brother suwini and i imagine myself as somebody who just came from outside ghana it looks as if 2016 was that that rosy but I believe that uh, at the end of the day, this caution that is being given by the IMF more or less uh, puts brakes to, uh, in terms of who is being truthful or not when it comes to where we are as a country. And I think it's a caution that government will have to take it seriously. Because if you look at the indicators as being put up by the IMF, they don't look that good. But uh, as I said, uh, it's just a caution. Mm. We haven't gotten there yet, and we don't need to get there. 2015, 2014, I happened to be in Ghana, and I know what happened with us when it comes to doom so. Mm. <laughs> we don't want to get there again. I think I think I'll just leave it. And I think that is where dog is not fair to me. Because yeah. you see, I am not painting a picture of a rosy 2016. I'm painting a <laughs> picture of how the difficulties I agree with you. were being dealt I agree with. with. Okay. I agree with you do you understand? I agree with you. There were difficulties, but I'm painting a picture of how right. they were being dealt with. Oh, uh, you you get into I agree with Doc is wrapping up and then I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> okay, Richard, so no, how does government take these? I mean, these are issues that <laughs> government has been struggling to, to, to put a foot on. Right. <clears throat> There's a pattern 
that we need to observe mm. in our country in terms of the management of the economy mm, between the NDC and the MPP. So that starts from 2000. Okay. The MPP came into office in 2000, inherited a battered and a shrinking economy. One that you cannot write home about. Left this country, left Ghanaians by the NDC. After many years of mismanagement, mm, they left us a crumbled economy and walked away. We came in in 2000, built, built, built. The economy stabilized. In 2008, we left it for them. 2009, they took over. At some, at some point in 2011, GDP grew by 14% or so. The economy was on an upward climb. We gave it to them. Hmm? Be it as it was in 2016 when they lost the power and we came in 2017, we inherited an economy that was looking down in the abyss again. You see, 2000, looking down the abyss, 2016, 2017, we came in looking down the abyss. The reason IMF has any mm. commentary to pass on our economy today is because <coughs> of the NDC. <coughs> mm. They, if had inherited economy that was growing, if they had kept that economy given to them by the MPP and former President uh, John Ajekunko for, we would not be having this conversation today. We will not. That picture must be painted clear. Now, we're having this conversation today, and we have a leadership and a government that is focused mm. on righting the wrongs, the economic wrongs. So what are we talking about? We just finished discussing how this government wants to improve revenue. Because when you look at the IMF recommendation, they talk about domestic revenue being weak, mobilization being weak. Mm. And so right then, like a perfect discussion you set up, we talked about how we achieve that goal of mobilizing domestic revenue. President looked in, made a difficult decision. Knowing, do you think the president made the decision not knowing what the NDC will say or what GII will say? But he was looking in there and say, how do we solve the problem mm. rather than what is convenient for me and my politics? So he made the economic decision of solving the revenue problem. That's what the IMF is talking about. And the same people who mess up the economy are sitting here on the fringe talking about, oh, you want to appoint that man, appoint that man. If you leave them, they would hang us up again at the IMF. So what we are trying to do okay. is 2015 that the IMF and the World Bank, through their review, categorized Ghana as debt, uh, debt distress. That's not true. It was in oh, May please. this year. Okay. Please, please. It no, was no. in May. Look, I'm talking. You just take your time. No, and I'll okay. you, you said oh, 2015. 15. Okay. No, 2000, I'm looking at the I don't see any. You are lying. I'm coming to you to wrap up. In May this year, the IMF and World Bank classified Ghana as a debt distress country. I'm coming to you to wrap up. I'm coming to you to wrap up. I'm coming 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 Really? Don't distract him. Really? Don't distract him. I'll get to the chance. Really? Really? Quickly. Really? We'll wrap it up. We'll wrap it right. up. In May this year, the that IMF not... and the World Bank classified Ghana as high rates debt. I, I, I want no, to give you the chance. Don't distract him. Let him help you. Richard, don't really get distracted. Sorry. We're he wrapping is, up. He is. So yes, so Alaji, you leave him. I'll get you to to do it. Okay. So, if you are not aware, just be quiet. The point I am making is this. That we have a situation where the NDC has been messing up this economy. We've gotten to a point where we are in a critical situation. Okay. We're making all the necessary moves to ensure okay. that we get this economy back to where we are building and not to get back to the situation the IMF is cautioning about. Okay. The problem we have and which we must work to fix, one, revenue, our exports to GDP is low. We need to work on that. Mm. But we need to get to a point where, right, right, when our economy is shrinking and we came in through the IMF program with them, to consolidate. Uh -huh. The problem we have had is revenue leakages. Okay. Or, uh, uh, you know, revenue leakages in the sense that when you stimulate this economy, 
the spending multiplier does not have effect here because the balance of the things we use in our country are important. Okay. That is a thing we have to solve. Okay. And that is why you have a government talking about one district, one factory to plug that hole. So we become imp we become export okay. dependent, okay, Richard, I'm not import dependent. I I'm but you haven't been fair. No. Yes, yes. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Right. So, right. Yes, yes, sorry, but right. so, sorry. Right. Sorry, right. Right. because of time. time. And I haven't, I haven't, yeah, no, but you're not going to let him speak because I am not even landed. Richard, you haven't landed, but I'm saying that the issue of debt uh, 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 how do how do they put that it? High risk. High risk. Uh, you risk. said 2015. Yeah. Yes. But is, is this something you will draw or you think that oh. we should, we should, we should if, if the story is the, the story is wrong, the, the, then okay. I am wrong. Okay. No, okay. Right. Right. So it's so right. it's, it's, right. it's right. okay. It, that is so, not fair. No, I think no. that I think that is it, not about. No, it's not about of time. If the story is wrong because the story it, it, says that right. It says quickly. Risk, quickly. Risk debt distress. In May this year, the IMF and the World Bank classified Ghana as high risk debt distress country. Okay. Read, 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 I'm read, grateful. Read, 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 okay, read, gentlemen, I'm grateful. Right. Dr. Medjinapo. No. Dr. Medjinapo is a lecturer, University of Education, Winneba. Alaji Suhini, MP for Tamale North. Richard Ahiagba is a member of the NPP's team. Grateful.